Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing a quick review of the Coons Engineering MR55BE. Uh, this is a rough cut mower that's tow behind and I'm actually towing it behind my Kubota 1140 RTV. Uh, and it does pretty good. Um, I actually just got this about a week ago. Uh, it shipped in a big rig, believe it or not, instead of a flatbed, which where I live was a little bit challenging for the driver to uh, get out here and then drop it off. Uh, this thing came in a crate. It was roughly assembled. Uh, a lot of the, the way these things are shipped, they actually ship them with most of the parts already included. You just have to take them off, put it all together, put them back on. So you don't have to worry about a box full of uh, little nuts and bolts and stuff like that. Uh, the biggest challenge really was uh, twofold. One was <laughs> getting the crate inside the property because the truck couldn't make it in here. Uh, and then assembling it in place uh, to get it to move so we can move it to the back part of the property. The other challenge I had was actually in the assembly and uh, I worked with Matt over at Coons to kind of figure out if this was just something that was unique to the build or if there was something I was doing wrong, whatever, because the instructions weren't quite clear about how to, uh, to do some of the assembly. Uh, and I'll just kind of point out what's going on here. But first of all, it's pretty dirty. I have used this a little bit uh, just to give it a test run. I'll kind of show you guys what it looks like before and after when it comes to uh, what my fields look like right now uh, prior to cutting and uh, what they're looking like afterwards. So I apologize for a little bit of dirt. Uh, anyway, putting this thing together. So you get it with the deck with the engine already installed and then you get these uh, arms where you know the, the wheels are attached to. And uh, front wheel is already attached. You get the caster wheel that's already there. You have to assemble the back wheel, which isn't a problem in and of itself. That's actually pretty easy. And you do that uh, on the other one as well. Now, where some of the challenges come in, uh, first off, you have to install this rail onto these lift bars, which I'll talk a little bit about what the setup I have here. Uh, it, I actually got the electric actuator, so I didn't have to worry about cranking it up and down by hand. Um, but you gotta install it here and then you have to install these actuator arms, this bad boy right here. And once you've got the wheels and everything on, this becomes a little bit problematic. Uh, and it, it has to do with the fact that this won't necessarily move side to side as much. Uh, and so when you try to put the actuator arms on, it really took a lot of brute force to align the holes to get the bolts in. So it took about three people to do that. Basically two people pushing on one side and uh, me bolting it in. Now I did speak to Matt about this. Uh, and he said that actually, you know, you're supposed to kind of do it loose here um, so that this can move a little bit further side to side and it's easier to line the holes up. Well, it doesn't say that in the instructions, so, you know, live and learn. But uh, got it done and uh, it's been fine. I've uh, been able to use this with no problems whatsoever. Uh, let's see here. What do we got going on here? So as far as what you get with this, you get some oil already in the engine. I had to top it off. Uh, obviously, you got to fuel it up. Now, this is a commercial grade engine. So this is not what you would typically see uh, on any kind of lawnmower, which is great. It means it's got quite a bit of horsepower, as you can see, 27 horsepower. This is the, as I understand it, the uh, uh, most horsepower engine they actually make for these types of mowers. And this particular model in general is actually one of their best sellers. A lot of people like me have acreage and we want to be able to tend to it without pulling out a tractor or getting a batwing shredder or any of that kind of stuff. So this actually makes it pretty easy. Uh, I actually have 126 acres. Most of it is, I wouldn't say most, probably about 50% of it is trees. So the pasture lands that I have are going to be easy to maintain with this thing, which is what I'm looking forward to. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I do have the electric actuator, so the hydraulic lift on this thing. This makes it a heck of a lot easier. You don't have to crank anything to raise and lower the deck. Uh, it makes it real easy to, to get over obstacles and things like that. Where I have actually seen this very useful, for me anyway, has been in cutting down saplings. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed about this is that, it, depending on the angle that you hit it at, and as you can see, I've actually got mine set, off, set up as an offset. So it's not set up to be towed directly behind, although I have done it directly behind and that's nice. Uh, I do like having it out to the side so I can whack some of the saplings without having to run it over first with the RTV. Uh, but one of the things that I notice is that if you get a big enough one and you hit it at a weird angle, you'll actually get the sapling kind of jammed up in here. So I had like half the sapling hanging out, half the sapling under the deck. And uh, when that happens, you have to stop because it's jamming up the wheels and um, having the hydraulic lift, I can just hit the button, lift it up, and uh, pull the, the sapling out from underneath it and then go along my merry way. So that's really been the only thing I've noticed that's a little bit of a gotcha when you're using these things. Uh, as you can see, the electric actuator actually doesn't hook up to the battery on the mower, it actually hooks up to the battery on your tow vehicle. So in my case, 
I've got it hooked up to the battery, which in the Kubota is here on the side. Uh, and then I've got my actual control for the up and down kind of zip tied to the bar here. Uh, they did ship it with some U-bolts that you can install, but unfortunately they were too narrow for, for my handle. Um, so I had to go the zip tie route. And it really, I don't use it as uh, enough to really worry about it being locked into place. This thing will swivel because of the zip ties. I need to kind of sort that out with uh, rubber padding or something. But, um, you know, like I said, I, I generally only use it when I'm pulling saplings out from underneath it or if um, I need to elevate it because of the uh, terracing that's been done when the triple C actually did some of that back during World War II for erosion control, which I have some of that on my property. Uh, the other thing that I've done recently that I kind of recognized was a requirement. And if you're looking at one of these things and looking to tow it behind a vehicle similar to what I got, you're going to want wing mirrors. <laughs> uh, I actually got my Kubota without wing mirrors and I got these as aftermarket uh, and actually just installed them today. And the main reason for that is if you don't have these mirrors, you're going to find yourself looking back behind you quite frequently, um, at least until you get comfortable enough with where the cut path is for the mower. Um, and it gets kind of painful when you're doing hours and hours worth of cutting. So having wing mirrors to be able to see that without having to turn your head is going to be a blessing, which is why I'm glad I got that. Um, what else can I tell you about this mower? Uh, it is a beast. I, I did a lot of research on tow behind mowers. There's several other vendors out there that make these things. Uh, but to be honest with you, uh, working with Matt over at Coons Engineering has been an amazing experience. Uh, they've been very uh, responsive. Like literally, I sent an email asking questions. They'd send an email right back response. I didn't have to wait a week or two uh, to get any kind of a response. Uh, from order to completion to delivery was about three weeks. Um, which is great, right? Uh, so many things right now with the pandemic are taking six to eight to 12 months to get delivered. Uh, when I heard three weeks, it's like, dude, that's amazing. Uh, for me, that's perfect because it gave me enough time to get my stuff situated uh, as far as what I wanted to tow this behind, all this other stuff, and uh, got it sorted out. So literally three weeks to the day, I had this thing delivered, which was nice. Uh, when I spoke to Matt last, he did say that these things are going fast and that they're, they're because of the shortage that everybody else is faced with, they're expecting to be out of stock pretty soon. So your mileage may vary on when you can get one of these things, but uh, if you've been looking for a tow-behind mower, uh, just through my limited experience so far, you would definitely want one of these. These things are built tough. They're built like a beast, and uh, I don't feel like I need to baby it. I feel like I can really take it around and kind of whip it around the land and, um, and not worry about breaking something in the process. Uh, one of the cool things about this uh, when I ordered it is they, they did go ahead and put sealant in the tires. So I don't have to worry about running over stumps and puncturing the tires, which is cool. So it makes it one less thing I have to worry about. Uh, one of the things you're going to want to do if you do get one of these things is you're going to need a clevis hitch. So this is something you'll need to be aware of. It does not fit on a ball hitch. It fits on one of these bad boys, uh, which is not a big deal. You can pick these up pretty much anywhere. Uh, and then it'll come with the D shackle here so you don't have to worry about buying one of these. Um, makes it a lot easier to, to manage. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I've got mine on an offset, but you can adjust this and actually make it tow directly behind, or you can actually flip it over to do a, a different side. Now, interestingly enough, they do make these, at least I've seen videos of them, where you can kind of piggyback these. You can do like a butterfly thing where you can have, I think, up to four. So you can have, you know, one here, one over on the other side, and then two over here, and it actually creates a, a four wide mower setup which uh, is, is pretty awesome when you think about it. Now, I don't know what kind of tow vehicle you'd need to pull that. Uh, <laughs> to me, it seems like that's a lot of weight. I think this thing weighs 750 pounds just as is. So, um, you know, if you're going to go that route, that's pretty pretty extreme. Uh, but, you know, honestly, it's, it's pretty affordable when you consider what I paid for this thing and uh, what you would normally pay for for like a batwing shredder and a tractor. You can get four of these things much cheaper than that. So well worth the investment. Um, the other reason why I got this is because, as you can see, I got a lot of trees, and being able to get up close to those trees is, is a pain point with a tractor. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do here pretty soon is actually get an ATV that I can pull this thing down. So what I'm going to do is cut trails with it and get really down underneath the tree line and uh, be able to mow around that to start cleaning things up a little bit. So... Um, so anyway, that's a brief review. That's been, again, my experience so far has been great with this thing. Uh, the learning curve is I extremely low, so you don't have to worry about being a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. Uh, you literally take a couple of looks at the instructions, and it's kind of self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to put together and everything. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with it. So what I'll do next is uh, get you guys some drone footage, kind of see how, uh, how this thing operates. Um, it is important to understand that, you know, I've basically done this field already. So this is an example of what the field looks like. 
and uh, when I start cutting what it doesn't look like, you'll, you'll be surprised. Uh, I've got probably three foot high goat weed. I got saplings. I got, uh, you know, this land has not been unfortunately shredded in quite a while. Uh, and that has to do with a couple of things. One with the, the leaseholder that I have on the property. That's the expectation I have, but he hasn't been able to keep up with it for the last couple of years, mostly because of the pandemic and the shortage of, of labor. Uh, but, you know, this is also something I enjoy doing. So I'm looking forward to, to being able to maintain the property by myself and, and have an implement that I can use on it uh, anytime I want. Flashlights when we're falling into that night Focused on what you feel Just when you were calling and love that time And we were bound to the city life Flashlights when we're falling into that night Focused on what you feel Just when you were calling and love that time Focus on what you feel Just when you recall 